Hi, I'm Steve Cummings with HP, and uh, we're standing in front of the HP Pod, our performance optimized data center. The concept of a data center container is simple it's a data center in a box. But there are some key differences we'll talk about as we walk around. And as you can see, we're starting out here on the wall of where you see some of the main panels everything from the emergency power off, access for the building management system, uh, where the power comes into the pod itself. And as we'll walk around, you'll see that it looks very much like a standard chipping container that we add uh, equipment to. Power will come in right here where you see the junction boxes. Um, you can bring in power at uh, 415, so uh, in Europe, uh, Asia, etc., then you bring in power straight in. Here in the U.S. at 480, you would transform the power before it comes into the pot itself. Imagine, if you will, the racks of IT here would extend all the way down the uh, length of the rack. So we've taken some of the racks of IT out in this case because uh, we wanted to have room for people to come in. Usually they would extend uh, the entire, entire length of the pot. And we have designed these racks to support any kind of equipment you put into a full depth 19 inch rack in your data center. So it's not just HP equipment. You can put in Dell, IBM, Sun, etc. We heard very clearly from customers as we did design, don't ship as a container that only supports HP equipment or only supports blades, etc. So unlike competitors or uh, pods, again, we'll support third party equipment. It is extremely high density. The 40-foot pod that we're standing in will support up to 600 kilowatts of uh, power density, so that's a bit over 27 kilowatts of rack. And packed into a pod, we can support over 3,500 compute nodes, and those are two processor uh, blade nodes, or 12,000 hard drives, so that's 12 petabytes of current technology, or any combination. Now, the, the, the racks aren't your traditional, your, your standard 7-foot rack. They're slightly taller? That's a great question. So they are uh, exactly as you say. They are 50U, 5U uh, tall. And the reason for that, a couple of different reasons. One is that, obviously, we had a bit more space. So we wanted to use the capacity. Second, it allows us to anchor them top and bottom. And these racks are designed, they're especially uh, stronger racks, they're designed to transport the IT inside the container. So when we ship it to a customer, if they want us to, we'll ship all the IT already deployed in the container and they get it ready to switch on. The final thing is the beauty of having taller racks is we're completely separating the cold aisle, which is where we're standing, from the hot aisle and back. That's what you want to do in a data center for maximum possible efficiency so you don't get air mixing. Now, uh, during your lunch presentation, you talked a little bit about the temperature and uh, the cold mm -hmm. aisle. Right. Uh, which was 90 degrees Fahrenheit which would seem uh, a little toasty for a lot of folks so let's talk about that because um, first of all the uh, cold aisle does not have to run at 90 degrees but that's what we recommend because that's how you get maximum efficiency if a customer is not comfortable with that then fine they can run it cooler not a problem at all the reason you want to do it though is again you get uh, higher efficiency so you get better energy efficiency and if you look at IT equipment, including ours, typical IT equipment is certified for up to 35 degrees centigrade, mm -hmm. uh, Celsius, excuse me, uh, in, uh, in the ambient air that they require. So 90 degrees is within that spec. There's no reason not to do so. You get higher efficiency. Um, it means that we bring in chilled water at a higher temperature. So instead of 45 degree chilled water, it can be anywhere from 55 to 75 degrees. Um, there are several advantages, but yes, it does seem a little odd to think about a cold dial as 90 degrees. Um, so uh, how is it that you can uh, go up to, to 90 like that? I gather it's because in, in this kind of uh, environment you have greater control over the airflow. You're exactly right. So if you think about a typical data center, a typical data center has you know rows of racks with gaps between the racks and the racks don't extend all the way to the ceiling, right? The pod is different. With the pod, we're completely controlling the air all the way through. So you could, name this, you could think of it as a giant closed coupled uh, cooling solution. Um, because of that, we can support 27 kilowatts of uh, power density within each rack, or again, a maximum of 600 kilowatts. And it means that we don't have to cool the air down as much because, again, we're controlling the air all the way through. So, Rich, you're exactly right. It's because we have complete control of the environment that we don't have to cool the data center down to uh, 65, 75 degrees. Sure. Okay. Okay, so come on through. All of the major components are uh, up. So as you see above us, we have the uh, blowers here. That's what's bringing the air through. The heat exchangers are uh, on top of the racks themselves. So cold air comes down from the blowers. It goes through the IT equipment, up into the hot aisle, and then circulates through the uh, heat exchanger. So it's a continuous uh, circulation. 
the pod monitors um, the temperature it has within the uh, with, uh, ambient environment within the pod itself, so it will turn the blowers up and down depending on what it's seeing within the environment, and it'll report that out to the customer's building management system. And, uh, you know, the second thing we heard from customers um, so if, is, if I don't want to have to retrain my people to work in a pod versus working in a data center, so interacting with the, the IT standard. is exactly the same. Um, Walk up to the front of the rack, you pull out drives or servers, blades, etc. You, you can sure access the backs of the racks completely without moving anything, so you can reach in for network cabling, etc. Again, designed to be very much like the environment they're used to. Um, another thing that's kind of interesting is, you know, typical build time for a brick and mortar data center is 24, 36 six months depending on what they're building and where they're building. We can uh, receive the purchase order for the pod and it ships out of our factory in less than six weeks. Um, you access the uh, backs of the racks through the sets of double doors we have here. Typically the uh, next question from a customer is, well what happens if I open the door while it's running and the answer is nothing. Uh, the pod can continue to run while the doors are open. And um, you know it's designed to either go into some kind of structure, so we do have a lot of customers planning to put them in a warehouse or a parking garage or something like that. Also, it can go outside as a standalone. So if a customer wants to just place it outside and uh, it remains there forever, then they can do that also. Now you talked a little bit about uh, the cost, because you know, for companies that are looking at, at rapid expansion, you know, sure. speed to market is one thing. Right. Everybody's looking at cost right now. Maybe talk a little bit about how the, the pod might compare to a traditional data center build. That's a great question. So we spent a lot of time on that because usually when a customer hears about some of the advantages, they then say, fine, what's the premium of buying it? And the answer is, usually there isn't one. If you look at the cost of building out uh, equivalent um, brick and mortar space, so you know the pod, depending on how many watts per square foot, is uh, equivalent to a larger amount of brick and mortar data center space. Costs for purchasing the pod are typically a bit less than cost of building out the brick and mortar data center. So your initial acquisition cost is a bit less. Your annual operation cost is significantly less simply because the pod is so much more efficient. So you end up with uh, um, lower operational cost. But again, there is typically no premium for buying the pod. It's typically uh, a bit less expensive than building out brick and mortar. And how many of these have you deployed? Because I'm gathering you're getting the, the data on that from um, somewhere. So we don't we don't actually talk about that, but I will say it's more than zero, if that helps. <laughs> okay. And uh, you know we're quite surprised at the uh, at the amount of interest because we were expecting that pods being a fairly new technology that customers would take a little time to get used to them. What we're finding though is that you f if you have pain in your data center, so if you're out of power, out of cooling, or out of uh, you know space in your data center, you're willing to look at a lot of different ways to solve that problem. And the beauty of a uh, using a pod is that it's so logical. I mean, you deploy capacity when you need it, and you deploy additional capacity when you need that. It has much higher power densities than a typical brick and mortar data center, and you can put it in places where you wouldn't necessarily you know choose to build a brick and mortar data center. So it has a lot of advantages.